subscribe to m code and ring the notification bell to get the latest content okay so now let's shift our focus to the optimization part in the spark data frames because many of us already knows what are transformations what are the actions and how to write a spy spark application but optimization is the most crucial part of every spark application because in production environment you will face so much issues while running your spark cluster because of the limited available resources in your spark cluster since it's a distributed pools many developers will face this issue which delays their execution of the spark application to able to avoid this and if you're handling big data optimization is the only thing you should be worried about because syntax and transformations everyone knows about it but optimizing that and run your spark application with the minimum resources which are available is the most crucial part so let's talk about some of the optimization techniques that you can follow in your spark application so first one is the catalyst optimizer so this you should be aware of so basically pyspark uses this catalyst optimizer which improves your query plans and the performance of your spark application then we also have some of the optimization techniques like the predicate push down as well as the projection pruning in which the catalyst optimizer will prioritize your execution and also remove or you can say prune the unnecessary columns which are not needed in the further operations and we also have the caching and persisting so i hope you already know about the cache operation so cache operation is nothing but will pull your data in memory and it is very useful where you have the data set that is most frequently used in the subsequent steps so if you have such kind of applications where your some data frame is more frequently used in the subsequent steps of your spark application then you should consider caching that or persisting that data frame to be able to get the data in memory which can be accessed quite rapidly and improves your overall executions execution time of your application let's talk about some of the optimization techniques in detail so the first one is you should be using the broadcast variables this is very popular techniques nowadays many of the developers are already using this technique for improving their spark application speed so broadcast variable will come into picture when you are joining a smaller data frame with the larger ones so for that purpose you should be consider using the broadcast variable so this technique will help distribute your smaller data frame because as you already know distributing the larger data set will not make much sense but if you have like smaller data set in your join operation then you can like distribute them on all your worker nodes which will reduce the data shuffling during the join operation so as you already know the shuffling operations which are nothing but quite expensive operations for any distributed system in this case using the broadcast variable will distribute your smaller data set on all the worker nodes that are available which which drastically reduces the execution time of your join operation so this is a simple code snippet where we have where we can see that how we can use that broadcast join here so as you can see once we import the required modules in your application we should create a spark session so spark basically contains the spark session that we have created here then we have the smaller df and the large df so we can use the join operations like this and we can use the broadcast operation as you can see and pass the small data frame in that which will distribute your data frame on all the worker nodes and drastically improves the performance of your execution so this is how you can use very easily you can use this broadcast variables in the data frames let's talk about the next technique so the next technique is also very crucial which is partitioning so as the name suggests partitioning means you will you will split your data frame into multiple parts and it will store distributed in across your worker nodes so you have to ensure that your data frames are properly partitioned for optimizing data distribution across your worker nodes so you have to make sure that you are choosing the right partitioning column so if you have a data based on the monthly basis then you can partition your data based on the months but it totally depends on how much data is available available for each month it should be equally distributed as per the partition so according to that you have to choose your partitioning column 
which will drastically minimizes the data shuffling during the transformation phase and if you have to repartition it you just have to use the df dot repartition so df here will refer to the data frame and the repartition method will have an argument as the column name so basically for example if you have a geographical information in your data frame then you can use like different regions and if your data is well equally distributed across the regions then you can choose region column as your partitioning column but this is just an example it will vary use case to use case and data set to data set so partitioning is also very important for optimizing your spark application then we have the persisting so if you have to improve the spark execution you should persist the immediate results which you get in a spark application so if you have like multiple operations on the same data frame so this we already talked about it caching and persisting are pretty powerful operations for improving the execution of such operations so if you have like redundant multiple operations on the same data frame then you should consider persisting the immediate result in a memory or in the disk so in memory will help you reduces the writing write reading and writing overhead on the spark so if you are using like the hdfs and if you save this data frame on the disk then it has to read and write back from the disk and it will have so much overhead so if you use persist and cache some data in memory then this will prevent the recomputation and improves the performance of your spark application and persisting is very simple as well so as you can see we can just df dot persist operation so df means data frame and the persist operation which expects the storage level which is memory and disk so the storage level argument will store your data either in the memory or in the disk or maybe combining both so it totally depends on how much data that you are handling and what type of same operations that you are going to apply on top of your subsequent data frames so this is how persisting works then we have very important one which is like you should use data frame api instead of rdds let me tell you why you may ask rdds is nothing but a core api of apache spark right but like things have changed now due to the catalyst optimizer every spark application which is written in python as well as which are using data frames have gotten very faster compared to the rdd and also the data frame api in pyspark is nothing but very optimized and it will perform better than the rdd api in many scenarios so if you are handling structured data only then you should consider only using the data frames in your code it is simple to implement and also optimize based on your use case so whenever possible you should prefer data frames for transformation and actions on top of your data set so the next one is like spark sql caching so as you already talked about the persist cache is also a similar operation you should leverage the spark sql caching mechanism so here we are using the spark.sql method to caching the tables on or the data frames in memory in memory means these are available in memory and if you are accessing them in the further computation it doesn't have to read it back from the disk and recompute it so you have to especially use it for the frequently accessed data you should catch you can you should cache that data frame or the table that are available in a spark application to be able to access it quickly and boost and speed up your spark queries so these are some of the optimization techniques that you can implement your spark application to really help you consume very few resources and optimize your execution time of your spark application so enough talking we'll see all these techniques when we build our spark application and we will use the best practices like caching persisting and everything to able to understand how to build a well optimized spark application so i'll see you in the next lecture so that's it for today i'll see you in the next lecture